Thank you, Madam Chair and committee. I'd like to thank um, all of you for hearing our testimony and listening to us. We appreciate that. My name is Creston Barr, and I'm proud to serve as superintendent of Eatonville School District. You should have a really large uh, document, so I'm going to zip through that today. Uh, we're a small district of 1850 students at the base of Mount Rainier, um, and we have a 96.5% graduation rate that we've worked really hard to get up to. We have been negatively impacted from the last legislation in three distinct ways. One is levy limitation uh, through the levy swap. Um, we have no regionalization and a high staff mix. And one thing that hasn't really been mentioned today is that the communication of the past legislation is really confusing our voters as we're going out for levy. Uh, Eatonville School District is located along the I-5 corridor, so our compensation comparables are outsized relative to our property values, and our revenue, our revenue nowhere near matches our neighboring wealthier communities. And our low property values um, have been really been singled out in, in specifically one reason, and that is our high staff mix and, re, and no regionalization. In fact, um, due to this fact, we are the only school district in Pierce, King, Snohomish, Skagit, Kitsap and Whatcom County that come out in the red in terms of salary allocation. And that is really astounding. It's like we won the lottery, but maybe of losers. Um, the second issue for us has been the reduction of levy capacity from $3.56 to $1.50 per 1,000, which is a reduction in 206 or over 50% of our levy. The difference between our property rich districts and small rural uh, poor districts can be categorized by a neighboring 1,400 student non-high district that can generate um, $6.65 million for their levy, and we at $1.50 can only generate $2.1 million, which is three times the amount. Thank you. Sir, welcome. Madam Chair and members of the committee, my name is Roger Andrasik, representing the Eatonville School Board. I support these bills, but more changes are needed to address the unintended consequences of 2242 to ensure that it does not negatively impact school districts or their employees. In our case, the new average salary allocation and no regionalization pay, along with a levy swap, will create greater inequity, attracting and retaining uh, teachers and providing equal enrichment from levies. We've been conducting levy meetings to educate our community regarding the February election. The public assumption is that the current school funding under McClary has solved all the school funding problems and that the levies are no longer needed. Some voters are convinced that the schools have all the money that they need now. Inadequate state funding for basic education still requires Eatonville to cover gaps in special education of a half million dollars, transportation of $300,000, and food service of 400000 through current levies of $4.9 million. These obligations take away from our need to provide additional staff outside of the prototypical school model and other non-basic education items such as fully funding a point two nurse, counselors, social workers, paraprofessionals, technology, maintenance, as well as school safety. All of our innovative programs along with the arts, STEM, music, and athletics are locally supported. We are proud, as Gresson said, of our 96.5% uh, graduation rate. Our accolades include STEM lighthouse schools, innovative schools, schools of distinction. As an elected official, it is my duty to provide Edenville students with an education for their future in order to prepare them to have the basic resources and the best teachers in the classroom so they get the best education and the most appropriate programs available. Without adequate uh, funding support for our students, our capacity to provide the previous levels will be, fall short. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to